Hey, hope you're having a great day. In this video, we're talking about a rather large storm system that's gonna be zooming across the United States here at speeds unknown to man here around the 9th through the 11th of December. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the Arctic blast that comes behind it as well and decode whether or not this thing's gonna be a super powerful winter storm or nothing to worry about. So that's what we're gonna talk about. Before we begin, click the subscribe button if you're new to the channel and want daily forecast updates, much more detailed than you would see on TV. And comment below how much snow you have seen so far this winter. I might make a little map of all of the amounts. So let's uh, get right into it here. First, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you the precipitation tracking day by day with this system. Then we're gonna look at the upper level jet because there is some uh, key features up there, some secret gems that are gonna determine whether this thing is really powerful or not. So I'm gonna start off on Monday here, Monday morning. You got a high pressure system sitting out here in Canada. Here's your low right down here. You can see that little black ISO bars, that little pressure gradient right there. Now. I do not expect this to be a very strong storm system for the north central United States in this region. The reason why is this thing it just isn't quite developed all the way yet. It's going to be a little bit slower to develop. The high pressure and cold air is also very strong and fast moving. So this low is just not quite there yet. And it's going to be a very dry, you know, cold snow for the north central United States, but not a whole lot of it. But as you can see, as this thing moves very rapidly, on Monday at 1 p.m., you know, that was Monday morning, but here, here's Monday afternoon. It's already in Michigan, so it's, you know, it, it's it's like a track athlete sprinting across a state here. And as you can see here, here's a low pressure system, very nice cold front out ahead of this thing. This is a very impressive long cold front. What I want you to do is keep an eye on this second piece of energy out here that may redevelop here along the cold front and track into the east half of the United States on Tuesday. So there might be multiple waves here. You can see out ahead of this cold front, there's plenty of moisture now. So the moisture is finally catching up. And I think, you know, by the time this happens, it's gonna be in the east coast. So plenty of moisture and rain out for the east coast. The high pressure out here is really non-existent. It's all the way over here. So, you know, probably gonna be mostly rain north of that warm front for the east coast here. But as you can see, here's your 540 line, kind of your rain snow line. And you can see snow on the back side of it. Now, the issue here is this system is so progressive, so fast moving, especially with that cold air on the back side. And it's, the energy is kind of spread out in the upper levels, very long, spread out. And that's going to cause less, probably for the most part, less snow for this region. However, it's going to be more widespread. So it'll be a lot of uh, snow for a lot of people, but just not a whole lot. And it's going to be confined for areas in southern Canada and northern parts of Wisconsin and Michigan. Now, will that change? Because, you know, models will change a lot. Will it flip to a big blizzard like sometimes they do? I mean, often models will flip back and forth. I will talk or I'll show you that in a second. There's some key features that we can determine whether that's going to happen or not. But nonetheless, you can see that very cold air behind it. As we head towards Tuesday, this is uh, Tuesday around 1 a.m., so early in the morning, here's your uh, cold front. Very, very powerful cold front. You know, not terribly windy behind it, but it's going to be breezy. You know, those ISO bars are a little bit spread out, but, you know, it's still going to be very breezy and cool behind it. You know, precipitation still out ahead of it in the warm sector. Here's your low up here. It's already in Canada. Again, your best snow is going to occur near and north and especially northwest of this low pressure system. And uh, with these types of flat looks, you can sometimes get it even to the southwest of these lows. Uh, but uh, your best lift is usually going to end up kind of right in this region right here. And you can see that's actually in Canada. But again, will that change? I'll get into that in a second. But you can see plenty of precipitation. Here's another piece of energy you want to watch here. Watch what happens here as we head towards Tuesday during the day. This is Tuesday. Now it's at 12 a.m. You can see redevelopment now occurs. Here's your low up here, your... Uh, first wave a little bit of one right here and then you got your high pressure out here this is indicating very very strong cold polar air mass your your core of your cold air mass is sitting right out here kind of in this region in the northern plains here's your low you can see that cold front now you see that redevelopment right there and look at this right here so the cold air comes down sets this up so by the time the second wave comes through 
there's actually a, an outside chance, a slight chance of some snow. And that is very far south. So that's why I decided to talk about this a little bit more because, you know, you're talking Tennessee, Arkansas, Kentucky. Right now it's conditional. It has to line up very perfectly here. And, you know, will that happen or not? We'll have to watch. But with this type of setup, it, you definitely can uh, see some patchy snow that develops some wet snowflakes as far south as that region right there. And you can see as we head towards um, Tuesday night, that actually scoots into the Carolinas almost. And uh, another wave of precipitation and some patchy instances of snow behind the wave of rain. So as that 540 line moves through that rain to snow line, you could get a little bit of uh, a little bit of snow. But again, this is a flat look. It's not that comma head look where you have the 540 line cutting in and you have a big ball of snow on the backside. So it's a very uh, quick burst of snow, maybe wet and uh, not a whole lot. But definitely uh worth talking about now so that's that now we're gonna look at the upper levels and will this change at all because models do change a lot what we're looking at here and this is a tool we can kind of use is the vorticity in the atmosphere this is kind of the spin and the lift in the atmosphere and what i'm going to do is uh well let's uh let me go to, to vorticity here i'm going to show you uh the upper levels here so this is uh, that first frame we were looking at at the ninth, and you can see what you want to look for here. The black lines are your height lines, so you can kind of find troughs and ridges. You can see a little short wave right here, and your storm systems are going to kind of uh, form near and ahead of those waves where there's divergence. Now, the other thing you want to look for is these blobs of energy. So the more of this, usually the more lift in the atmosphere that pulls up energy from the surface, you get like a low at the surface and a, a strong storm system sometimes and precipitation near and ahead of these lines that, uh, you know, cross the isobars. Here's your energy right here on the ninth. So you can suspect your snow is going to be kind of out in this region. This is around the ninth that uh, overnight here. And you can see the issue here is it's flat. You want these black lines, these height lines to be closed off like a low pressure system in a way. That energy is kind of spread out, as you can see here, and it's flat. There's nothing closed off. So that, and it's also very fast moving. So it's progressive, kind of weak, and spread out for the most part. As we head towards the ninth here at 1 p.m., when the system really starts to go to hyperdrive here in the Midwest, you can see your energy comes in. There, you know, the height lines are a little bit more condensed. And uh, so you got better troughing out here, a little short wave right here. So you can see your energy, but it's not overly strong. And then you got your second area of energy down here. Watch what's going to happen here is your energy is really spread out between these two systems. Uh, you know, with a powerful storm system, you want them closed off and you want higher amounts of vorticity. And uh, as you head towards uh, the day on Tuesday here, you can see that energy moves to the east. And here's your, your energy along the front but it's still really not closed off. But this is a little bit more impressive down here. You know, so by the time this moves through, we'd have cold air that we could look at some snow, but it's still very flat looking spread out and uh, it just doesn't quite close off. So this looks like a big, long, elongated cold front type of look with uh, rain out ahead of it and then some isolated batches of snow behind it, particularly up in the northern US, but even a slight chance in this region right here on Tuesday. Now, will this change or not? With these types of systems, because this is so widespread, this is so powerful, really, I mean, the trough in general is so powerful. It's a big long wave trough. The signal is so strong that I don't expect you would see very big changes here. I think this is locked in. That's my forecast here. It's locked in. You're not going to see a big blockbuster snowstorm in the northeastern United States or the Midwest. You could see some snow, but I uh, just with this type of look, you typically don't. These models will not change a whole heck of a lot with this type of look. If it was a, the waves are a little bit weaker and more nebulous and maybe multiple waves, there would definitely be a lot more uncertainty and you could definitely see uh, flip-flopping the models. This is just so strong and widespread. I don't think you're going to see it. Your best bet maybe would be with this little thing on Tuesday that comes out. And uh, I've seen that happen before where those things can kind of turn into little systems. But for the most part, this looks locked in. It looks like an elongated uh, cold front for the most part. But again, powerful storm system with lots of precipitation 
out ahead of it and uh, even some snow behind it. So like I said, my forecast is this is going to be locked in, not going to be a big blockbuster snowstorm. There might be hype out there. I don't know. But again, here I'm just not expecting it with this system. Some systems later in the month potentially have a greater chance for that. Now, how about the precipitation and snowfall amounts here? We'll go look at that real quick. And uh, we'll look at the snowfall real quick. And uh, the GFS has a batch of snow. And you can look at this real quick. This does actually put down some decent snow on Tuesday as well. But your snow band is going to be up here. And you can see, generally speaking, really not a whole lot, but three to six inches in this band right here. Most areas, you know, receiving a little bit less than that. And then obviously Canada, where that cold air is going to be just kind of sitting up there a little bit more. So six to 12 up there. But relatively speaking, it's not crazy powerful for this type of system. You know, with the dynamics at play, with these types of powerful winter storm systems, if these things close off, you'll get 12 to 24 inch type amounts up there. So definitely not anything near that, probably six to 10 inches up there. But you can see Tuesday, it actually, the GFS does paint out a little bit with that second wave, a decent one to four inch batch. So definitely be something to watch. I've seen it happen before with these elongated fronts. Sometimes you get the snowfall. It won't be as strong, but it'll be further south. So it's actually good news if you you're a snow lover and you're farther south in the U.S. But you know it won't usually be as strong with these crashing cold fronts. But some snow nonetheless. Now, what we'll do is we'll look at the uh, the uh, European computer model just for fun here and uh, show you what it's showing. Again, I don't suspect you're going to see a whole heck of a lot of difference between these models and whole, whole heck of a lot flip flopping. Uh, but you can see the, the main band on Tuesday, it's also indicating snow in this region, a little bit farther north with it, stronger in the Appalachians. And then uh, it actually indicates a little bit more snow for the northeast United States. And you can see uh, pretty similar for the north central United States. I just want to make sure that that was not for a different storm. We'll look at this real quick. We'll fast forward this. But you can see the storm system on Tuesday here, Monday and Tuesday, pretty similar to uh, the GFS and uh, yeah, see, you know, the euro is actually a little bit more aggressive with that second wave, the one that I'm keeping my eye on a little bit because you'll have the cold air that's set up already. So if we do get a second wave and it does become closed off, it will have all the cold air in the world to work with and it'll have moisture out ahead of it. So we'll have to watch that. And then the cold, crashing cold air will be slowing down a bit by then. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, actually, if you go into long range, we'll have to make another video for this. This is another storm I've been talking about later in the month. That is pretty gigantic, but too far out for that for now. I'll make a video on that in a few days. We'll look at the precipitation amounts real quick, and we'll look at the euro just while we're on it. And, you know, really, for the most part here, lots of precipitation as we head towards Tuesday into Wednesday. I mean, we're talking lots of rainfall for the northeastern United States. Two to as much as three inches in some areas. So generally speaking, about one to three inches here in the pinkish area, these types of uh, systems where they're, you get a lot of moisture drawn out ahead of these low pressure systems and you get multiple waves, you're gonna get a lot of rain, prolonged rain out ahead of it. But behind it, where that snow falls, it's gonna be very quick. The snow is gonna be very, very quick moving. The rain's gonna be quick, but it, it'll be prolonged with multiple waves. You can see, you know, precipitation amounts generally a quarter inch in the northern U.S. You know, this is only liquid. So that's kind of just taking into account the uh, snowfall. So one other thing we'll look at is the temperatures. We'll look at the temperature anomalies. And really very cold for much of the northern U.S. as we head towards Tuesday. This is the European computer model. This is uh, going to be Wednesday morning when I think the cold air is going to be the strongest. Let's go back to that. And you can see... The European and GFS are indicating 20 to 40 degrees below average in the north central United States here. So just crazy. And temperatures will be in the single uh, digits for much of the east, northeastern United States, Midwest, to as much as maybe 10 to 15 below zero. Maybe 20 below zero in the northern plains up in this region. This is kind of where... This is the generally the coldest air where I have my uh, winter forecast. That's where I'm forecasting the coldest air this winter. Really smack dab over where this thing is. So I think you're going to see this look multiple times this winter. Temperature swings for sure, but you'll see this look happen 
multiple times this winter and really make that area pretty cold. So very cold in that area. You can see Wednesday that kind of moves into the east coast. It dies out just a bit, but still 5 to 15 degrees below average. So that's going to be wrap it up for the storm system. Comment below how much snow that you've seen so far. Subscribe if you want daily forecast updates. Much more detail than you see on TV, long-range forecasts, and much more. And I uh, hope you have a great day. Share this with your friends, and we'll see you soon.